Hi guys, welcome back to the vlog. My name is Will Ellington and in this video I want to show you a free alternative to Midjourney. If you don't know what Midjourney is, it's one of the most popular uh, AI image generating apps and it's entirely cloud-based online. You pay a monthly subscription fee of minimum $10, maximum $120 and you access Midjourney through an app called Discord where you can type a prompt in text describing an image and then it will generate the images for you. So these are some examples of Midjourney images. It's very popular. So the benefit of Midjourney is that it's cloud-based, nothing to download, nothing to install. You just pay the fee and then you're good to go. If you like the images it generates, you can download them uh, and that kind of thing. The negative side is, of course, on the one hand, the cost, as I just said. On the other hand, there are certain restrictions with Midjourney in terms of what type of prompts you can put in, what keywords you can use. And this is for very good ethical reason. Certain words are not allowed in Midjourney, and you can imagine why. And um, yeah, so those are the two main restrictions. With the, the app I want to show you, which is called Focus, although it's written with three O's, so technically it's Focus, but I'm calling it Focus. It's an open source app. You download it to your PC, you run it locally from your PC. It doesn't have to be connected to the internet to run. So that's the big difference. It's a heavy app. Um, there are multiple gigs of files to download, up to about 15 or 16 gigabytes of files in total. But the good news is, unlike a lot of projects on GitHub, and this is a Python-based project, unlike a lot of projects, you don't need any advanced knowledge. If I scroll down here, and I'll leave a link to this page in the description of my video, all you need to do is have a decent enough PC, and I'll come to that in a minute, and then click the download link. That will initiate the download of these files in a zip file, <coughs> sorry, a zip folder. You have to extract the files from the zip folder, just right click on the zip folder, click extract. Once it's extracted, you then click on run.bat, and it will open um, a series of communications that will run systematically and you just follow the on-screen prompts. There's also a description here of how to install it, which is fairly straightforward. There's no surprises, nothing technical, just downloading files, clicking the run.bat and letting it do its thing. Once it's done its thing and installed, it will look like this. It runs in your browser and it will look like this. At the top, you have an image section, image panel. At the bottom, you have the prompt box. So I just tried cat on a skateboard. Let's do that now. Type your prompt and then click generate. This is running with default settings on my mid-tier PC. And it takes about 20 seconds for one image with the default settings. There are some advanced settings that you can change quite a lot of parameters with, and you can um, get much different results, but I'll get to that in a minute. So default settings, here's an example of one image, cat on a skateboard, fairly straightforward. If you like the image, you can download it. If you want to upscale it, you can do that too. I'll show you that in a minute. So you can see, very simple GUI, graphic interface. So once you've downloaded the files, run the run.bat, follow the instructions for the installation. That should all go fairly smoothly. Then you should be able to launch it with this GUI and generate images. Okay, so they do say the minimum GPU memory requirement is four gigabytes. So you need a PC and you need a graphics card that has at least four gigs of RAM memory. Anything slower than that, anything uh, more basic than that, I do not recommend using Focus because it's very intensive. It's very resource heavy. It's drawing mostly on your GPU. So if you have a faster, higher end GPU, then Focus is going to be much quicker for you. If you're running an old GPU, it's going to be really, really painful and sluggish. Also, if you're going to be running uh, focus for long periods of time, making many batches of images, 
be aware that it is GPU intensive and your GPU will um, take th the brunt of the load and that will shorten its lifespan. Uh, yeah, if you're using it sporadically, uh, like I do, should be no problem whatsoever. Okay, so those are the provisos out the way. I will leave a link to the Focus GitHub page. All you have to do is scroll down, find the download section, click the download link, download the first zip file, unzip it by right-clicking on it, and then you will get this, um, these files. You'll get a folder called Focus, the Python embedded folder, then three uh, bat files, run.bat, run, anime.bat, and then run realistic.bat. So just run dot bat, just click on that and then let it run. And uh, it will it will self-install, it will download certain components. Again, it's a heavy download process, about 15 to 16 gigabytes. All right, so that's about installing it. Um, I'm not gonna explain any further, just follow the instructions here. About using it, let me just wrap up with a couple of pointers about using it. I'm not gonna go in into detail in the advanced features. Maybe I'll do that in another video. But just a couple of things to get you started. So once you've installed it, it will launch this browser-based GUI. You can add your prompt and it will just do the default settings. Let's say you want to keep this image of the cat, but you want to upscale it. You want to make a higher definition or higher resolution version. You can click on image uh, input image, and then you can drag this image into the box here. And then on the right side, you can vary the image, create variations that are subtle or strong based on this image, or you can upscale the image by 1.5 times or two times. So two times is the maximum resolution upscale, and you can play around with that. If you just click on that and then click generate, it will generate a higher res version, and you can see it running the process right now. And again, depending on the specs of your PC, this will take more or less time. My, my PC is a mid-tier PC. Nothing special, but um, not too shabby either. And so it's going to run through the processes, 18 steps for this upscale generation. There is an upscale faster uh, version, which is slightly lower definition but it's faster in terms of time. Okay, so that's what you can do to upscale the image or to vary it to create variations. So I'm just gonna let that run its course. That's upscale or variation. You have also image prompt. Here you can drag in any image you like and the, the AI will, let's say you want to use this image again. Let's say you want to use this particular cat in another background or another situation. Well, then that's where you can use image prompt. So instead of a text only prompt, you can add text and image and the AI will read the text and it will follow the basic physicalities or contours of the image in generating the new image, if that makes sense. Uh, there's the upscale version of the cat. Much higher definition, you can see the right side, more focus on the face, much more detail there. Here it's very blurred and basic. So if you're gonna keep the image, you definitely need to upscale them. So again, that's go to image input, upscale or variation, drag the image here and then click on upscale. Image prompt. So let's say you wanna keep this cat, and make another image based on it. You drag the image here. You can have four different images of the same person or figure. So let's say you're creating a character, but you want to repeat the character in different settings. You're going to use image prompt and you can put a face of the character, the whole body of the character, maybe a particular setting. You can add four images that will tell the AI, I want to create a new image based on these images. If you click on advanced here, you can then choose whole image prompt, pyrocanny, which is the background, CPDS, I, I still don't know what that is yet. I have to check that out in the documentation or face swap, just keep the same face. So you can choose these things here. You can manipulate them on an image by image basis. And then you can run the prompt, generate the prompt again. So you could say cat on a skateboard in a shopping mall. And now it will take this cat as the main subject and repeat it 
in its new image in a shopping mall. I'm not going to run that because it takes a bit more time. I'm just going to I'm just pointing that out as a possibility. All right, last thing, going back to our basic setup, let's say you want to change some parameters. So click on advanced, you get a setting panel on the right side. You've got settings, style, model, advanced. So settings are the basic settings for this app. You can have some presets here. Um, initial or default are the two basic ones. Uh, you can add more presets by downloading stuff, but that's advanced level stuff. I'm going to leave that for now. So let's just go with initial for now. You can change the performance speed. You can have extremely fast generation, but lower quality, higher quality, but lower, uh, but, uh, lower speed. You can have a lightning, um, which is an interesting option, which basically works the image with lightning. Um, check that out. Try it out for yourself. You can change the size of the image, the aspect ratio. Uh, there's no 169, unfortunately, but the closest I found to 169 is 1344 times 768. This gets you the closest to 16 by 9 or 1080 uh, P um, setting. You can change the number of images up to 32. It can create a batch of 32 images. Right now it was set by default to two, so it creates two images. But if you want up to 32, that's fine. You can change the output from PNG to JPEG to WEBP. You can add negative prompts, things you don't want to see. So for example, you don't want any text in the images, maybe uh, aberrations, you know, deformities, or uh, often the case that hands and fingers with AI are very difficult to generate and you'll often get um, um, six finger figures or seven fingers or arms in strange places. You can add things here for negative prompts, things you don't want to see. And then random, you can keep, uh, you can switch off. Uh, I keep it on random, that's kind of basic. Uh, style, there are all sorts of styles. Again, you'd have to download these, but if you click on it, it will automatically download them. All sorts of styles to play with if you want to use some of those. That's self-explanatory. I just use the focus, uh, V2, the sharp and enhance. That's the basic settings. You can also install different um, AI models. So the, there are different models to install. You can play with them. They have different parameters. That's really advanced stuff. You need to check the documentation with focus for that to understand what each model does differently. Um, yeah, so I'm going to leave it there because the video is already 12 minutes and it's just me talking, 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 and I'm sure you're tired of hearing my voice. I just wanted to introduce Focus as a free open source alternative to Midjourney. For me, no need to pay the basic, the fees for Midjourney. If you've got a subscription with them, consider canceling it and download this. If you've got a PC, just download the files. It takes a while to set up the downloads because they're heavy files, but once it's done, it's done. And then you're good to go. You can use Focus as much as you like. You can add any prompts you like and do what you want with it. Okay, so that's my video. Thank you for watching. Uh, it's been a long one and uh, I will catch you in the next one, maybe with some updates on Focus and some advanced tutorials on Focus. Yeah, let me know if you're interested in this. Leave a comment. I'd be grateful if you want to use Focus or if you're using it and uh, consider subscribing. That really helps out a lot and thumbs up is also really appreciate it. Thank you guys. Catch you next time. Bye-bye.